looking like this no this is these are all abnormal promyelocyte these are abnormal promyelocytes okay these are abnormal promyelocytes now characteristically they have an indented indented nucleus ye jo nucleus hai this is indented indented nucleus is there also called as bilobed nucleus some people also say it as buttock shaped nucleus now can you see over here this indentation also present over here can you see the bilobed complete bilobed nature also present over here yes everyone has appreciated this point hypergranular yes, bilobed sir. nucleus very important now that the very important and diagnostic feature of this now you tell me what are we looking over here parot Our rod. rods, presence of segment cells. Pre very good. This is presence of multiple over rods are there, and this cell is classical called as a phagot cell, and this cell is a classical picture that we see in case of M three type. Okay, I have just compare what how a myeloblast look like, how a lymphoblast look like. So myeloblast is larger. This is a smaller. moderate amount of cytoplasm but it is granular in nature okay they will contain the granules whereas over here they have a scanty cytoplasm over rods may be present not present in all cases but it is also always absent nuclear chromatin is always fine over here it is coarse and nucleola is 1 to 4 over here it is indistinct this is exactly how it is and in so good morning everyone is my voice audible yes sir good morning yes sir good very morning good. so today it's a very very important lecture that we are going to start today we are going to start with your myeloid neoplasms okay and more importantly we are going to discuss about acute myeloid leukemia a m l so today our point of discussion will be acute myeloid leukemia so today we are going to start with myeloid neoplasm part 1 and we are going to discuss acute myeloid leukemia in details and if time permits we are going to start myelodysplastic syndrome as well so before i start with acute myeloid leukemia uh, i would just like to brush up your knowledge and uh, to revise some key concepts that i have already spoken about in the previous lecture so do you remember this particular chart yes this particular diagram from robins so when i have taught you about the normal hematopoiesis uh, uh, normal hematopoiesis i have already spoken about uh, this particular chart okay and what is the importance why have i shown you just wanted to tell you that there are two lines of differentiation there is a lymphoid line of differentiation and there is a myeloid line of differentiation uh now we are going to discuss about your myeloid neoplasms so these are those neoplasms which are arising from cells of this particular series of the myeloid series okay this is very very important to understand okay one very important point that i would like to make over here that there are also neoplasms which are arising from the lymphoid series and the details of which we are going to cover in the future classes okay so now we are concerned with myeloid neoplasms okay so today we are going to discuss about that okay now do you remember this particular chart i have already spoken about this chart yes so i have deliberately put this chart so as to revise the few concepts of normal myelopoiesis that how normally the myelopoiesis occur because if you don't understand the normal process of myelopoiesis you are not going to understand myeloid neoplasm okay so it's very important and imperative that you understand so there are certain steps first you are having the myeloblast then you are having the promyelocytes then you are having the myelocytes metamyelocytes band forms and segmented neutrophils now what happens in case of acute myeloid leukemia in case of leukemia what is happening yes can anyone tell me there is a arrest there is arrest in maturation there is arrest in maturation what does that mean that normally the myeloid series is going to mature in this particular fashion yes or no but in case because of certain mutations or because of certain etiologies okay what is going to happen the arrest will be at this stage so what will happen in the peripheral blood in the bone marrow you will find increased amount of blast myeloblast okay 
So for example, sometimes the maturation will take place just up till the state of promyelocytes and then you will find increased amount of abnormal promyelocytes. Okay, so this is very important to understand. There's an arrest in the maturation because of which the amount of blast increases. Okay, this is what is actually seen in case of acute myeloid leukemia. You will see increased amount of blast. According to the latest edition of WHO, the, uh, uh, the basic uh, cutoff for diagnosis is more than equal to 20%. 20% myeloblast should be present for diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia. Okay, so have you understood this concept very clearly? Yes, what happens in case of acute myeloid leukemia? There's an arrest in maturation. Okay, okay. Now this is, this is another series I have shown you. This is the monocyte series. That, that I sh have shown you, that was the granulocyte, uh, the neutrophil series I have shown you. But over here, I have shown you separately the monocytic series. Why have I shown you the monocytic series over here? Now, this is again a revision from the previous lecture. This is again a revision from the previous lecture only. I have already spoken about this in the previous lecture. What is very important over here to understand, if you see that in the monocytic series, okay, there, there you are going to have a monoblast. Then you will go have a promonocyte, immature monocyte and monocyte. Okay. Now, how do you understand that a particular cell is from a monoblastic series? So look at the cytoplasm. It is classically ground glass grayish. It is ground glass grayish cytoplasm and not only grayish, they are also vacuolated. They are also vacuolated. Now, why this is a blast? Can you see the prominent nucleoli? and the open chromatin, the prominent nucleoli and open chromatin are features of any kind of blast, okay? And they are having prominent nucleoli. So these are very important features, which is letting us know about the blastic nature, okay? And the promonocytes, if you see, see they are having an excessive folded nucleus. The nucleus is folded on itself. Can everyone appreciate the folded nature of nucleus? Now, you must be thinking that why, sir, are you showing me about the monocytes? Because when you are going to see the basic series, FAB M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7, in all these series, they have a different mix and match of cells. Okay. So these series are going to have mainly your myeloid series cells. M4, M5 will have monocytic series. Okay. M6 is your erythrocytic series and M7 is your megakaryocytic series. Okay. So I will uh, discuss in details about each of them. Okay. So is this understood? Just you should have a basic idea. Okay. About these series, how these cells looks like. Okay. Now, again, this diagram has also been shared before. What is the basic importance of this? That when you are carrying out immunophenotyping of the cells, okay, then every lineage has its own marker. So for example, if you see the myeloblast, they are positive for CD13, CD117, CD33. Okay, myeloid series, myeloid series in particular, they are diagnosed with CD33 and MPO. Monocytic series, they require lysozyme, CD14, 16, 11C and CD33. If you look at the erythroid series, erythroid series has CD71, glycophorin A and hemoglobin A. Megakaryocytic lineage is showing CD42, 41, 61, von Willebrand factor related antigen. Now, why am I just speaking about these? Yes, because for the categorization of the acute myeloid leukemia cases, we require these markers. That is why these four is very important to understand. And I will show you how we are going to use it. So this is the basic revision that I've already taught you in the previous lecture. I'm just uh, trying to revise these concepts to you. Okay, is this clear? Is the revision enough for you all? Can I move ahead? So now we are going to start with the myeloid neoplasm. So this is a very concise way uh, for undergraduate level. So this is more than enough for understanding about acute myeloid leukemias and other myeloid neoplasm, whatever it is given in Robbins. Okay. So the myeloid neoplasm has been categorized into three main parts. There is acute myeloid leukemia. This is the main topic of discussion today. Okay. Then we are having myelodysplastic syndromes and then we have myeloproliferative neoplasms like chronic myeloid leukemia, CML, then polycythemia vera, 
then essential thrombocytopenia or and then PMF. So all these are other neoplasms, myeloproliferative neoplasms. So acute myeloid leukemias is a type of myeloid leukemia characterized by an immature myeloid forms. As I told you, what are the immature forms? The myeloblast, as I showed you. Okay, there, there, there is basically accumulation of blast. Why? Why there is accumulation of blast? Yes, there is accumulation arrest, of arrest yes, because of arrest. Yes, what is going to happen? As I told you, if for example, this is the bone marrow, for example. Okay, so for example, normal hematopoiesis is taking place. Now, for example, if cancer cells starts to accumulate over here and increase in amount, it is going to occupy all the place that is uh, there for normal hematopoiesis. And as a result, any kind of leukemia or any kind of process which is going to occupy space within the bone marrow, they are going to suppress normal hematopoiesis. So as a result, what is going to happen? There will be decreased hemoglobin production. So patient is presenting with anemia. Yes or no? There will be decreased granulocytes. The patient will have increased infections and there will be decreased in the platelet count. The patient is going to present with bleeding. So any kind of leukemia or any kind of process which is occupying the space for normal hematopoiesis will present in this particular manner. Okay, understood. This is the main topic of discussion today that is acute myeloid leukemia. Now, the second important point of discussion that we will have maybe in the next lecture is myelodysplastic syndrome. Now, in myelodysplastic syndromes, there is not an arrest, but what happens, there is a defective maturation of the myeloid progenitors. So, what is happening? So, for example, normally, the shape of the neutrophils are like this. But in case of myelodysplastic syndrome, maybe they will have, and normally, a lot of granules are present. So, in case of myelodysplastic syndrome, you will have nucleus somewhat like this. Okay, and you will have very less amount of granules. So there is a defective maturation. Okay, all of the cells of all the series look very bizarre. That is what MDS is. And myeloproliferative syndrome is that syndrome, myeloproliferative neoplasm, where there will be an increased production of one or more types of blood cells. Either myeloid series will be increased, for example, in CML, or for example, all the three series will be increased in PPV, or just, uh, you know, your platelet count will be increased. So depending on the type of myeloproliferative neoplasm, we will see an increased production of one or more types of blood cells. But these are all belonging to the myeloid series. Is this clear to everyone? Few very important basic concepts that from where is this abnormality arising? So the origin of the neoplasm is from transformed hematopoietic progenitors. So first of all, what is hematopoietic progenitor? The earliest stem cell, the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell, pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. So this cell, when it undergoes any kind of mutation, we will say that this cell is transformed in nature. Okay, so hematopoietic stem cells, when they are subject to some kind of mutations, they are said to be transformed and they are the ones which give rise. Okay. Now, like other malignancies, as we have read, these myeloid neoplasm is also going to evolve over a period of time. So they can become aggressive. So for example, if a case, okay, if a case for, of AML, for example, uh, they are from the beginning, they are having a very good prognosis and they're responding. But over a period of time, they might undergo further mutations and they might acquire such mutations that they will become resistant to treatment and they will become aggressive. Okay, So this is there with any kind of solid malignancy also. Okay, So similarly, it is also over here. Okay, Now remember, this myelodysplastic syndrome, see this myelodysplastic syndrome and this myeloproliferative neoplasm, both of these, they are not leukemias. But over a period of time, if they, they can transform to acute myeloid leukemia. So the end stage is AML. In any kind of myeloproliferative neoplasm, the end stage is AML. Okay. So just remember one thing. And one very important thing over here is that chronic myeloid leukemia, in one of the most important transformation, we find that chronic myeloid leukemia transforms to acute lymphoblastic leukemia. This is also seen. That think about it, the CML, a myeloid neoplasm is transforming to an ALL. Okay, so what is the importance of this? When I'm talking about this, what is the importance? It means that any neoplasm is arising from hematopoietic stem cell because from the hematopoietic stem cell arises both lymphoid as well as myeloid. So when the origin is this, so even a myeloid neoplasm can transform to a lymphoid neoplasm. Very, very important concept and a MCQ. Okay, is this clear to everyone? 
Excuse me, sir. Yes, tell me. Sir, um, CML falls under myeloproliferative uh, syndromes, meaning neoplasms, and yes. ACL falls under lymphoid, 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 lymphoid neoplasm. See, see over here the basic pathogenesis. If you see, this is the hematopoietic stem cell. Yes, and they are giving rise to lymphoid and myeloid series of cells. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Clear? Okay. That is why I told you, please revise these concepts. These are very important. The basics are very important to understand. Clear? Okay. Now we are going to start with the main topic of discussion today. In this background, we are going to start acute myeloid leukemia. So you have the basic concepts clear. Okay. Now there are very important points that we are going to understand in today's lecture. So let us see. So it is a tumor which is arising from hematopoietic progenitor, that is hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, these are pluripotent cells. And how? Why it is arising? Because of some acquired oncogenic mutations that is impeding or putting a break on the differentiation, leading to what is called as a maturation arrest, leading to maturation arrest ultimately leading to accumulation of immature myeloid blast in the bone marrow and later in the blood, in the peripheral blood, okay, PBS, later in the PBS. Now, what is ultimately happening? Now, the entire marrow is being replaced by the blast, which is causing marrow failure. There is pancytopenia. Yes, there is pancytopenia. And because of that, there is accompanying uh, complications relating to pancytopenia, that is anemia, thrombocytopenia and neutropenia. Now, remember, it occurs at all ages, both acute myeloid leukemia as well as acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Both of them, they occur at all ages. But remember, the incidence increases in life and AML is predominantly seen in adults. Predominantly seen in adults, more so after the age of 60 years. Now, you will not believe, having said that, Last week only, I have done a bone marrow examination of a seven-year-old child. And that child was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. So this kind of presentation is less, but it is not completely absent. So what I want to tell you that acute myeloid leukemia predominantly occurs in adult, but it is not that a rule, that a rule is there. It can also occur in, in children. Okay, And acute lymphoblastic leukemia occurs predominantly in children, but it is not that it will not occur in adults. I have also done a bone marrow examination in a 60-year-old patient and he was suffering from acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So it is not hard and fast rule. Predominantly is the word. Okay, is this point clear to everyone? Now, this is very important. Thousands of questions in the last four or five years. So in 2017, there was a latest classification from WHO. And from that time till now, five years have been there. There have been thousands of questions which are asked just on the classification of WHO. So in the recent form, WHO has four major categories of AML. AML has been divided into four major categories. Okay, I am going to show you all these four categories. Okay, before I go into the latest classification, you have to know about the old classification as well. Okay, it is important to understand the old classification also. Now, old classification was based just on the morphology. What is the meaning of morphology? Yes, can you tell me? What is the meaning of morphology? Morphology means how gross. it is looking, how it is looking under the microscope. Not the gross. Over here, not the gross. Over here, it is the microscopic picture. Okay. Now, for example, myeloid cell is, uh, for example, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, neutrophil, they are having one form. Monoblast uh, or uh, promonocyte, they are having some other form. So looking at that, promyelocytes are, have, are have, having one other form. Okay. So there are different, different morphologies that is very important to understand. Okay. So one very important, this was based on the morphology. So there was a stage called as M0 called as undifferentiated or AM. Now, remember this M, M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M6, this is the FAB. What is the full form of FAB? Yes. French American British classification. French American British classification. So you have to understand one very important point that this was the old classification. It came 30, 40 years back. Okay. And still it is used in our country like India because we do not have uh, the machines for carrying out immunophenotyping at all the centers. So in the peripheral centers, in the centers like, uh, like how is our college in Kuch Bihar, 
we do not have the facilities to carry out the immunophenotyping. So what we are going to do over here, what is the alternative that we give the diagnosis according to FAB where IPT is not and then we advise that do IPT for exact categorization according to the latest guidelines. Okay. So here the series was M0, which was having the most undifferentiated cells. Then there was M1, wherein uh, wherein uh, the differentiated cells, see the first cells are the myeloblast. Okay. And from the myeloblast, we were having what? Promyelocyte. Yes. Then we were having metamyelocyte. Metamyelocyte. Why I'm showing you, I'll tell you. Then we were having after promyelocyte, we were having, sorry, we were having myelocyte, not metamyelocyte. We were having myelocyte. Okay. We were having myelocyte. Then we were having meta. Then we were having your band it's forms. Band then band we were having the mature neutrophils. Okay. So what is, why am I telling you this? In M0, in M0, majority of the cells will be myeloblast. Okay. Understand. In M1, See, from here till here, okay, this is the promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, all these three forms, all these three together will constitute less than 10%. Okay, that means more than 90% are blast. That was the definition of M1. Agar aisa hota hai, it is M1. Then M2 was what? M2 was, was that with granulocytic differentiation, that is the promyelocyte, myelocyte and metamyelocyte was more than 10%. Here, the promyelocyte, metamyelocyte, and your, your myelocyte was less than 10, per more than 10%. Now, what happens in M3? M3 may you have majority of the cells, they are abnormal, abnormal what? Abnormal promyelocytes. I will show you the diagram. Majority of the cells in M3 were abnormal promyelocytes. In case of M4, Remember, M4 means you will have both myelocytic series plus monocytic series. You will have myelocytic plus you will have monocytic series of cells. But remember one thing, the monocytic series of cells is should be, should be more than 20% but less than 80%. You understand what I am saying? Monocytic cells should be more than 20% but it should be less than 80% of total cells. Okay, this is the range. In M5, in M5, the monocytic series should be more than 80%. Okay, that is why M4 were, was also called as myelomonocytic, whereas M5 is called as monocytic in nature. Okay, M6 is the one where there is erythroleukemia, erythroid series of cells is more, and M7 is the one where there is your megakaryocytic series of cells is more. Is this clear? This was the basic classification of French, American, British. And over there, we used to use cytochemistry to differentiate the cells. Now, do you remember all the markers that I told you? Yes. How am I saying that this is M, uh, that this is a monocytic series? So what are the markers for the monocytic series that, that we had seen? Yes. What are the markers for monocytic series? Yes. Right now, I showed you, you have to remember these points. For IPT, what were the markers for monocytic series? Yes. CD14, CD16, lysozyme, NSC is also there. Okay. Neuron specific enolase, NSC is also there as a marker. So, this is by cytochemistry we are doing the series. So, for erythroid series, how are we confirming? CD71, glycophore, and A, these are all important MCQs, hemoglobin A. For megakaryocytic series, CD41, CD61 are very important. Okay. And to see whether they are belonging to the myeloid series, do CD33 uh, th and myeloperoxidase, MPO. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. How, how we are doing? Now, this was the old classification. Now, you will not understand the new classification unless until the old classification is there. Is this clear, the FAB classification, or should I re re repeat once more? Everyone. Yes. Is it crystal clear to everyone? Sir, please repeat once. Okay, I will just repeat it. It is very easy, but you have to remember. I'll just repeat it very in a very short way, I will, I'm going to repeat it. Okay. This is not that much easy because of that. I'm telling you the base concept should be very clear. And trust me, even if you read thousands of books, this concept will not be, be, become very clear. Okay. So under the FAB classification, as I told you that there are the normal, we are having the myeloblast, promyelocyte, 
माइलोसाइट माइलोसाइट मेटा माइलोसाइट एंड आफ्टर दैट वी वर बैंड द बैंड फॉर्म्स एंड देन द न्यूट्रोफिल सेगमेंटेड न्यूट्रोफ रिमेंबर व्हेन यू आर हैविंग an undifferentiated variety you will have only blast okay that is the m0 series okay which is the most m0 series if you are going to see m0 it is the most undifferentiated series out of all these cells is it clear to everyone then we are coming to m1 in the m1 series what happens that this promyelocyte myelocyte and metamyelocyte promyelocyte myelocyte metamyelocyte all these three they are constituting less than 10% of all the nucleated cells in the m2 series if you are going to see okay in the m2 series this promyelocyte metamyelocyte they are going to constitute more than 10% but less than 80% but less than, they are sorry they will be more than 10% only just remember this okay in the m3 series here majority of the cell will be abnormal promyelocyte not normal abnormal promyelocytes abnormal promyelocyte we are going to see this is also called as apml okay acute promyelocytic leukemia i am going to tell you in the m4 series m4 series also called as myelomonocytic series so over here what will happen you are going to have some other cells what are the other cells you will have monoblast plus you are going to have pro mono blast now what are these cells mono blast and pro mono blast i already have shown you this pro monocyte and pro mono blast can you appreciate the mono blast and the pro monocyte okay both of these are regarded as blast okay this is also regarded as a blast equivalent it is also a blast equivalent so the percentage of these cells okay the percentage of mono blast and pro monocytes okay in case of m4 is more than 20% but they will be less than 80% so the range is 20 to 80% in m5 this range of monocytic cells will become more than 80% and how do how do you confirm the monocytic nature of these cells what were the markers we saw cd14 cd16 nse nse is done by cytochemistry okay that is why they have done because french american fab classification was based just on cytochemistry so in that time ipt wasn't there okay so in m5 we have seen this now in case of m6 i'm not going into the criteria this is the old criteria not at all followed now okay just remember m6 refers to the erythroid series and for erythroid series what was the marker glycophorin a hemoglobin a and cd71 71 and for m7 acute megakaryocytic cd41 cd 4161 that's it if you remember this and cd 42b okay so all these were markers so this was the old classification it is still widely followed because when we are giving the diagnosis morphologically based on what we are looking in the microscope only then fab classification is accepted okay now come to the latest classification of aml when you are asked about this don't worry when you are asked about this you will not have to write this entire thing the classification what you should know that there are four categories aml with genetic aberrations also called as recurrent aml with recurrent uh recurrent chromosomal translocations or abnormalities or recurrent genetic abnormalities okay or recurrent genetic translocations so under this there are three very important points aml with translocation 821 okay at least you have to remember aml with translocation 821 then we are having aml with inversion 16 aml with translocation 1517 rara pml okay this aml with translocation 1517 is corresponding to m3 okay that is apml very very important it is corresponding to fab m3 okay just remember this very important point then we have aml with tra with translocation involving 11q23 and aml with normal cytogenetics and mutated M np1 so there are many others but at least what is to be remembered is the first three so aml with translocation 821 aml with inversion 16 and aml with translocation 1517 now you must be thinking that why sir why are you teaching us this and why who has done it in this way look at the prognosis of these 
so those aml which were having these translocations were having very very favorable prognosis so it was very important for the who to categorize and separate these so that these patients are diagnosed cytogenetically and they receive the best treatment because they might even have a cure and the most favorable out of all of them is apml that is the m3 variety apml which is showing translocation 15 17 this is having the best prognosis but one of the very sad part is that apml only if it is treated only if the patient is receiving the treatment that is atra that the patient will be able to survive if you will not be able to diagnose the case in a very good way or in a very uh, what should i say uh, uh, if you are not being able to uh, diagnose this case uh, very fast then the patient will die also so it is at most that even uh, in your laboratory when you diagnose a case of m3 you should inform the visiting clinician so that he can start the patient on atra so the patient's life will be saved and it is purely it is you know patient can have 95% cases can have a cure also okay now a a apml sometimes when have 11q they are having a poor and with normal is favorable only so these are the few points that you should keep in mind this was the first thing that is ap, AP uh, aml with genetic aberrations the second is aml which is having myelodysplastic like features all of the aml acute myeloid leukemia which is associated with mds i told you mds and other myeloproliferative neoplasm over a course of time can change into aml and such aml which has either come from prior mds or aml with multi lineage dysplasia or aml with mds like cytogenetic aberrations all of them are having a very poor prognosis so this is the second category aml with mds like feature then there is therapy related aml now for example okay for example you uh, a child is suffering from neuroblastoma less than 1 year of age the diagnosis was made the patient received some surgical therapy followed by chemo radiotherapy so whenever a patient receives chemo radiotherapy such cases are also at a risk of development of future carcinomas even if a child is subjected to ct scans or multiple radiations or any kind of therapy they might also develop aml the bad thing is that any aml which is developing you know uh, uh, after receiving some kind of chemo radiotherapy they are having a very very poor prognosis okay any kind of chemotherapy radiotherapy after that aml can develop this is the third category so this was the first category aml with genetic aberration second category aml with mds like feature third is aml which is therapy related the fourth is aml nos not otherwise specified now what is this the fourth classification is actually very much similar to the fab classification of m1 m2 okay so they have given aml minimally differentiated which was corresponding to m0 okay then they had given uh, your this is corresponding to aml m4 this is corresponding to aml m5 this is corresponding to aml m6 aml m7 but according to the latest edition you do not use the m categories okay i think this was m1 and this is your m2 so there is no m3 over here because m3 is now over here see can 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 you appreciate aml with translocation 15 17 so all the m3s were seen to have this so this m3 provision is not there in the latest edition okay is this point crystal clear to everyone regarding the classification now i will show you this is a more simple classification if you cannot remember that the who classification can be given as aml with recurrent genetic abnormalities like translocation 821 inversion 16 translocation 1570 now 821 is usually it is pointing towards m2 inversion 16 is towards m4 e eo eo means m4 is nothing but myelomonocytic but they are having a variant where eosinophil is more it is also called as eosinophilic leukemia and translocation 1517 is pointing towards m3 okay then you are having aml with multi lineage dysplasia aml mds uh, uh, therapy related and fourth is nos this is corresponding to the old fab so minimally differentiated m1 without maturation m0 i have just written opposite over here so please pardon me this is m0 this is m1 okay okay then we are having with maturation can fall under m2 only but we are not having any you know corresponding but see myelomonocytic is m4 monoblastic monocytic is m5 erythroid leukemia is m6 
and megakerocytic is M7. It is corresponding to the FAB classification. Apart from that, these are the new entities which are given in the latest edition, not given in Robbins. Acute basophilic leukemia, acute pan myelosis with myelofibrosis and myeloid sarcoma. Okay. Is this crystal clear to everyone? The basic classification. Just you have to remember these four headings. Okay. The recurrent genetic abnormalities, these three. Multilineage dysplasia, that is MDS related. Therapy related is third and this one is corresponding to FAB. But remember, there is no M2 and there is no M3 over here. Okay, no M2 and M3 over here. Just M1, M0, M4, M5, MC, M7. Apart from that, these three entities have been added. Is this crystal clear? The classification of acute myeloid leukemia according to the latest edition of WHO? Yes, everyone. Is it clear? Can we move ahead now? Yes, sir. Now we will come to the pathogenesis, which is again a little bit difficult part, but again an interesting part to understand. Okay, so according to the uh, you know latest pathogenesis of the AML. Now remember, the pathogenesis will not be given in any book books of hematology. Also, the pathogenesis is best given in Robbins only. So if you are going to read any hematology book for a good explanation of pathogenesis, you are not going to get. Pathogenesis is best given only in Robbins. So blindly follow Robbins for pathogenesis of any, any neoplasm, any cancer, anywhere. Best pathogenesis is given only in Robbins. So the first kind of pathogenesis is that they are saying that this AML is associated with certain transcription factor mutations. So they are involving certain mutations involving the transcription factor, which is interfering with the normal differentiation. So for example, the two very common chromosomal rearrangement, translocation 821 and inversion 16, is disrupting certain transcription factors that is run X1 and CBFP. Okay, these are certain transcription factors. You need not remember. At least you say, just give example that these two chromosomal rearrangements are actually leading to an altered expression of a transcription factors which is required for normal hematopoiesis. Just remember this, this much will be enough for you. So what happens that because of this gene rearrangement, they are creating a chimeric gene, which is going to give rise to a chimeric protein, which is going to block the maturation of normal myeloid cells. Okay, not very difficult. Another very important example is AML with translocation 1517. Again, it is encoding a chimeric protein. Now what it is doing that this chimeric protein, it is consisting of a retinoic acid receptor alpha. We call it as RARA. Okay. Okay, and a portion and it is combining with PML, a protein called as PML. So this is the fusion protein which is formed and this fusion protein, it is actually interfering with the normal differentiation leading to the arrest and mature and, and the accumulation of abnormal promyelocytes. Okay, now the basic treatment of this, remember it's an important question, is ATRA, all trans retinoic acid and arsenic trioxide, ATRA. This binds with this and stops the bad effects of this RARA PPML. Okay, so this is the first that is transcription factor mutations or mutations which are affecting the transcription factors leading to a block in the normal differentiation or alteration in the normal myeloid hematopoiesis. Okay, clear. The second type of mutation is that those kind of mutation which is activating the growth pathways. Okay, so for example, this 1517 is uh, along with 1517, sometimes they are having activating mutations in FLT3. So what is they are doing? They are increasing the normal maturation. So there is more growth and proliferation. So if you see certain cases of AML, okay, they will have very high counts to the tune of 80,000, 90,000, 1 lakh. So if, for example, any kind of AML, Okay, we also do FLT3, uh, you know, IP, we also do uh, carry, carry out cytogenetics to see if any FLT3 mutations are present. Okay, so if it is present, it is pointing towards a more poor prognosis because FLT3 mutation is going to increase the, the growth. Okay, now the combination of this APML along with FLT3, it's a potent inducer of AML in mice. Already it has been seen. Okay, so just remember, now sometime mutation can also be there in other pro-growth pathways like RAS mutations might be there in subset of, of this. So this might be there. So both of them, they are having one function to increase the growth pathway. So there will be increased proliferation of the cells. The third thing is mutations that is affecting the epigenome. So for example, sometime there is a silencing. This is the latest, this is the latest addition latest, I think in 2021 only, this uh, uh, latest thing has come up. 
So what happens? Some of these mutations lead to abnormal DNA methylation. Now remember, DNA hypermethylation is one kind of epigenetic change. Yes or no? So what does it lead to? It is going to lead to gene silencing. It is going to lead to gene silencing. Okay. So this group of mutations, for example, has been has involved silencing of certain IDH1 and IDH2 genes. Okay. And as a result, these mutations lead to new enzymatic activity of these genes, leading to an increased expression of an oncometabolite 2 hydroxyglutarate. Okay, and this 2 hydroxyglutarate can also lead to accumulation of certain hallmarks of cancer or acquisition of certain hallmarks of cancer. So just remember this. Mutations involving IDH1, IDH2 gene leading to new enzymatic activity leading to accumulation of 2 hydroxyglutarate. At least remember this point. Okay. Okay. And lastly, mutations of TP53 or genes that regulate P53. Now, any kind of AML, any AML associated with P53 mutation is always having a very bad prognosis and they are resistant to th standard therapies. Now, this is the only part which was most difficult to understand. Now we are going to come, but you have to write, uh, if you're, you will be asked the pathogenesis, you have to write these four headings. The first heading is the mutations affecting the transcription factor with altered um, myelopoiesis. Second is mutations which is causing increased growth. So activation of FLT, RAS, at least you have to write. Mutations affecting the epigenome, DNA methylation leading uh, to mutations in IDH1-2 genes accumulation of 2-hydroxyglutarate and lastly mutations with TP53 which is portending a poor prognosis. So is it easy enough? I know it is difficult but I hope I have made it little bit easy for you all, the pathogenesis. Now we come to the more easy parts and the interesting parts of the morphology. Now can you appreciate why have I given this diagram to you all? What is this? And what is this? Yes. Myeloblast. Both of them? This is a myeloblast, okay? And what is this? Myelocyte. No, this is a lymphoblast. I have deliberately given this diagram. So, because in your exams, you will be given the slides. Now, it is one of the uh, uh, competency given in the National Medical Council. You will be given these slides to differentiate whether it is a myeloblastic tumor or lymphoblastic tumor. So why I have given you, so first you have to understand what is a myeloblast and what is a lymphoblast. If you compare the size, how will you compare the size? You will compare the size with the help of a RBC. So if you compare with the RBC size, which one is larger? Myeloblast is larger or lymphoblast is larger? Yes, you myeloblast. 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 myeloblast is larger. So you have to be very, very practical. Okay, there is, it's very easy to understand. These are more smaller in size. Accepted. Second thing, if you look, if you look at the cytoplasm, which one is having more cytoplasm? Yes. Myeloblast. Myeloblast is having more cytoplasm. They are having less amount of cytoplasm. Now, if you compare both of them, which cytoplasm is having more granularity? If you see over here, this one is having more granularity. Increased granules are present over here. Whereas over here, at almost no granules are present. Okay, look. Now, after that, what are the other points? Now, if you look at the level of the nucleus, now, what are these? What are these? Nucleoli. nucleoli. So, there is present of nucleoli. Approximately 2 to 5 nucleoli is present. Can you see any nucleoli in lymphoblast? Yes. Can you see any lymphonucleoli? It is 0 to 1. Maybe some of them might contain over here. None of them are containing any nucleoli. So 0 to 1 nucleoli is present over here. Also, if you will compare over here, the diagram is not very clear. The nuclear chromatin is more open. In case of myeloblast, it is more coarse. It is more coarse in case of lymphoblast. Okay, It is more coarse in case of lymphoblast. So this is how you are going to differentiate a myeloblast from a lymphoblast. Okay. Now, I will ask you one very important point. Tell me, what is this? Ye kya hai? What is this? All rods. All very rods. good. Over rod. Now, what is the importance of an over rod if you are asked in the exam? Yes. Categorization. Uh, no, not the categorization. Is overrod present in all cases of myeloid leukemia? It is not present. But when overrod is present, 100% you can give the diagnosis as acute 
myeloid leukemia even if you see overrod in case of a peripheral blood smear even in a pbs if you get blast containing overrods you can give a straight away diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia without thinking twice this is the importance of overrod given clearly in the latest edition of who okay now this is one diagram where i have just compare what how a myeloblast look like how a lymphoblast look like so myeloblast is larger this is a smaller moderate amount of cytoplasm but it is granular in nature okay they will contain the granules whereas over here they have a scanty cytoplasm over rods may be present not present in all cases but it is also always absent nuclear chromatin is always fine over here it is coarse and nucleola is 1 to 4 over here it is indistinct this is exactly how it is and in your exams you have to diagnose it will be one of the components of your exam at the undergraduate level as well and in all the usmle frc path exams also you have these questions so you should be able to differentiate and how you will differentiate i have told you the basic features okay is it clear to everyone we will approach this in this particular manner only now why have i shown you this this particular diagram i have i have shown you this diagram before also what is the importance of this diagram now many times you get confused that sir how do we differentiate between a blast lymphoblast and a lymphocyte remember always see the size of a lymphocyte okay is always the nucleus of the lymphocyte is corresponding to the size of a normal rbc a large lymphocyte might be large little little lit, little bit more large with a little bit more cytoplasm but a lymphoblast is much more larger as compared to an a normal rbc so this is the most important point of recognizing a lymphoblast from a lymphocyte because both of them are having a high nc ratio yes or no so how you differentiate this is the most important point now this is a peripheral blood smear tell me what is this yes this was a question in aims Platelets. Yes, so you have to understand. It is not large platelet. It is a normal platelet. It is platelet. Normally occurring platelet. Now, from this diagram, can you tell me what is the platelet count? It is approximately. It is reduced, sir. Yes, it is twenty to thirty thousand. It is reduced. Yes, absolutely. The platelet count is reduced over here. Okay. Okay. Very good. so we are going to see certain points over here which is very very important don't go through any other books or points just go through whatever i am going to share you to today the diagnosis of aml is based on the presence of at least 20% myeloblast in the bone marrow okay this is number one mcq the second thing is several types of myeloblast are recognized and individual types may have more than one type of blast so for example you might have a myeloblast along with that you might have what a monoblast or its blast equivalent called as the promonocyte yes or no so there were two series one was m4 myelomonocytic and one was m5 monoblastic type of leukemia now myeloblast i have already told you how they looks i'm not discussing the feature again now the cytoplasm they always contain peroxidase positive azeriflic granules go for the myeloperoxidase staining mpo staining by cytochemistry will come out to be positive now overrods overrods are distinctive needle like so what happens what are these overrods they are nothing but when multiple such azeriflic granules okay they are coalescing together so they will form a rod like this and this is only forming the overrod overrod are nothing but these are needle like azeriflic granules and they are numerous in one type they might be seen in any type of myeloid neoplasm but they are numerous and seen in case of aml with recurrent translocation 15 17 that is apml that is corresponding to which fab yes which fab it is corresponding to m3 very good that means you are attentive now monoblast kaisa dikhta hai i have shown you the diagram of the monoblast at the beginning of the lecture how you will recognize first of all monoblast are even larger than myeloblast and they are having a folded lobulated nucleus they lack overrods and they are nsc positive nsc by cytochemistry by ipt you can say cd14 cd16 okay very important one point not given over here is the ground glass cytoplasm yes or no ground glass cytoplasm yes everyone i have shown you and they are vacuolated cytoplasm i have shown so you the gray. diagram ground glass gray cytoplasm in that yes vacuolated cytoplasm then in some amls you can have megakaryocytic differentiation which which fab 
क्लासिफिकेशन इज विच मेगा कैरेटिक क्या होगा एफ एम सेवन एम सेवन वेरी गुड ऑफ एन एक्सोनिट ना वन कैरेटरिस्टिक फीचर इज ऑफ एम सेवन इज दैट दे शो मैरो फाइब्रोसिस ओके दे शो मैरो फाइब्रोसिस Now, rarely remember the blast AML will show erythroid differentiation. Now, remember the blast may be more than one lakh, but remember they are usually under ten thousand in about fifty percent of the patients. Okay, this is not with regard to AML with erythroid. This is in any kind of AML. In any kind of AML, this is it. Now, remember sometimes there are conditions where blast may be present in the bone marrow. blast is present in the bone marrow but in the peripheral blood you will not find any blast that condition is called as a leukemic leukemia okay what is the condition when blast is present in the bone marrow but it is not present in the pbs it is called as a leukemic leukemia if for example blast is present in the bone marrow but it is present in reduced amount in pbs what is that condition called as sub leukemic leukemia sub leukemic leukemia okay just remember this very important point okay now i am showing you this particular type of graph uh, pbs now first of all you tell me why is it a myeloblast why it is a myeloblast you tell me why it is not a lymphoblast i am just going to highlight overload is there yes um, where is the overload i cannot see this one you are sorry. speaking about so this yes sir okay uh, So granules in the site over. Okay, okay. You said okay. This is also one overload over here. Okay, okay. I accept. But how how we are going to say myeloid? Can you see the cytoplasm has so much of granule? These are the azurophilic granules which is present even in normal myeloid cell. This is the first sign symptom that it is a myeloid series cell. Is clear? Now why it is a blast? Can you see the chromatin is open? Can you see so many? so many nucleola is there abundant yes, cytoplasm is there these are characteristic blast these are the characteristic myeloblast okay now because can you see majority over here at more than 95% actually 100% cells over here they are what they are myeloblast only so they are corresponding to m1 okay over here if you see pro myelocyte myelocyte meta myelocyte they are actually very less less than 10% yes or no so that is why we are going under m1 but this 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 much amount of classification you don't need it is uh, for your level it is just you should say it is a ml aml containing myeloblast okay now if you see over here okay if you see over here what are these cells what do you think these cells are what do you how do you say that these cells are different from myeloblast first of all look at the amount of granules they are having excessive amount of granules increased amount of granules yes or no now so granular yes now i will now i will just show you one diagram look at these cells now i will show you one diagram which we had seen in the beginning now over here if you Hold see it. if you see actually it is not very well given over here but at but over here actually if you compare with the myeloblast the amount of granules in a pro myelocyte is much more as compared to a myeloblast so what i wanted to tell you actually that these cells are resembling which cells of the series they are resembling the pro myelocyte if you look at the normal pro myelocytes they are looking like that now why am i saying because increased number of granules are present over here that is why these are pro myelocytes but are the normal pro myelocytes looking like this no this is these are all abnormal pro myelocyte these are abnormal pro myelocytes okay these are abnormal pro myelocytes now characteristically they have an indented indented nucleus ye jo nucleus hai this is indented indented nucleus is there also called as bilobed nucleus some people also say it as buttock shaped nucleus now can you see over here this indentation also present over here can you see the bilobed complete bilobed nature also present over here yes everyone has appreciated this point hypergranular yes, bilobed sir. yes very important now that the very important and diagnostic feature of this now you tell me what are we looking over here overload 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 presence of segregate cells very good this is presence of multiple overloads are there and this cell is classical 
called as a phagot cell. And this cell is a classical picture that we see in case of M3 type, okay? M3 type, okay? Now, this is called as M3 type, that is APML, acute promyelocytic leukemia. If you are going to carry out cytogenetics, so you are going to see translocation 1517, okay? Just remember one thing, translocation 1570. Now, look at this diagram. Look at this diagram. Okay, now you tell me what kind of leukemia you think it is. First of all, it is myeloid or no? Tell me. Look at the size. Look at the myeloid. cytoplasm. There are some myeloid present. So first thing is that it is myeloid. I can say. Now look at the nature of the cytoplasm over here. How it is? Ground uh, glass. Vacuole. Uh, not much vacuolated over here, but usually they are vacuolated. But what is the important? What is this? What is this? Folded nucleus. Nuclear folding. Nuclear folding is there, but this is a monoblast. Why am I saying is a mon monoblast? Look at the nature of the cytoplasm. It is bluish, immature. Look at the nature of cytoplasm over here. Some, some very less, but nucleoli is visible. This is a monoblast. But if you see over here, this is a pro-monocyte. All these are pro-monocyte. Now, very characteristic thing over here, this is the classical nuclear folding, if you can appreciate over here. Can everyone appreciate the classical nuclear folding? Over here also, the nucleus is folded on itself. This is one outline. This is another outline of nuclear folding. Classical nuclear folding. So you can see the shadow of the nucleus behind. Can everyone appreciate? Can you appreciate this folding line is there? Can everyone appreciate this folding line? It's very important to appreciate the nuclear folding. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? This is a case of what? This is M5. This is the case of M5, wherein the monoblastic cells are accounting for more than 80%. Remember, these are blast. Okay. Monoblast are blast. Okay. But these pro monocytes are also considered as blast equivalent. So they will come under blast only. Okay. As I explained to you before. I am not going into the very details because it will confuse you. At your level, this Sir, is... 20% is other over 80% the cover, no? No, no. For the, see, remember, for the diagnosis of AML, acute myeloid leukemia, more than 20% is enough for diagnosis. But for further categorization, if, for example, more than around 20 to 80% are monocytic, then it will be M4. And if more than 80% are monocytic, then it will be M5. AML is there. For AML diagnosis, just more than 20% blast is important. But what is the nature of the blast? That is helping us to further categorize. Is this concept clear now? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, there is something called as immunophenotype. Now, as I told you, now, if I want to see, so for example, right now, whatever. So, for example, I am diagnosing a case of an AML. So, for example, my main problem is it is an acute leukemia. But I don't know if it is an AML or an ALL. So for that, we are going to carry out immunophenotyping. So what are the myeloid-specific antigens? Yes? Yes? So very important. CD33. CD33. So if you see a population of blast is there, which is expressing CD33 over here. And okay. So this is very important. This is showing me that it is an AML. Okay. Also, all, over here, the cells which are expressing CD34 only, that is, they are very immature cells. Okay, very immature cells. Okay, these are myeloid blast. This is these are multipotent cells. They do not express CD64. CD64 is a marker of mature cells, whereas CD34 is a marker of immature cells. So these are immature cells and these are belonging to myeloid series. Okay. Okay. Now let us look at the clinical feature. Now, clinical feature we have already done. So, what are the features they will present with? They will present with features of anemia. Neutropenia, thrombocytopenia. Now, why do they present? Pinch. It's very easy, easy. So, clinically, anemia will present with what? Fatigue. Infection will present with fever. And thrombocytopenia will present with spontaneous mucocutaneous bleeding. Easy or no? Very easy to understand. Now, remember, in certain kinds of, of uh, uh, in certain kinds of leukemia, especially APML, APML, they are releasing certain procoagulants. Okay. That is stimulating clotting inside the body. And ultimately, these patients are developing DIC, multi-organ failure. So they present with bleeding manifestation. Last week only, I did a patient. That patient was presenting with gum bleeding. 
Okay. Also, last year I did a patient of APML. The patient presented with hematuria. So such features of bleeding tendencies always think. that the patient might have apml okay they always present and come in the dic stage okay now they might have infections with fungi pseudomonas commensals are also there now signs symptoms related to involvement of tissues other than the marrow are usually less striking in aml than all so what they are saying that in aml usually there is leukemia there will be blood findings okay but in case of all more than the blood findings you will have hepatosplenomegaly all these things are there but remember one thing there is one kind of aml that is with the monocytic differentiation that this pre having presentation other than the peripheral blood they will present they will inf they can infiltrate the skin presenting with leukemia cutis or they might infiltrate the gingiva as well now remember the cns involvement is far less as compared to all all is having more cns involvement and remember all this that we have read about we have read about aml aml means what acute Myeloid leukemia. Leukemia. That means what is the meaning of leukemia? That means such cells are present in the blood and the bone marrow. Okay, that is the meaning of leukemia. But if such presentation is there in the form of a swelling, for example, there is a localized swelling in the skin or localized swelling in a in any part of the body, then we will use the term myeloid sarcoma or chloroma. This is a localized soft tissue mass when AML. is presenting in the form of a localized soft tissue mass we call it as a chloroma or myeloid sarcoma is this very clear this was a very important mcq which was asked a localized soft tissue mass which is showing all the sign uh, all the cells just like or it is you know composed of myeloblast only it is called as a myeloid sarcoma or a chloroma okay is this clear okay let us look at the prognostic factors and everything now the overall prognosis is quite guarded as aml is difficult to treat around 60% of the patients achieve complete remission with chemotherapy but only 15 to 30% will remain disease free after for 5 years so there is not a very good prognosis okay of aml now the diagnosis is or, or the prognosis is varying with the different molecular subtypes i have already shown you the basic chart very important mcq aml with translocation 15 17 is having the best prognosis only if the patient is given treatment very soon i cannot tell you the importance of this it is curable the term they are using is curable in more than 90% of the patient this is only if the patient receives atra on time if the patient doesn't receive it on time the patient will deteriorate and die out of 90% of the patients i have diagnosed and reported around most of the patients have died before they got treatment because in the peripheral center treatment is not available the the patient is referred to big cities by the time the patient is going to the big city they are diagnosing and they are giving the treatment the patient dies okay other like translocation 821 inversion 16 they also have a relatively good prognosis with conventional chemotherapy okay and remember what are the bad prognostic factors when the age is over 60 years all or the aml is developing after uh, you know in in a setting of mds or if the patient has received some therapy and after that he has received or he has developed aml that the prognosis will be very bad if he is having any kind of tp53 TP mutation or for example flt3 mutation it is portending a bad prognosis okay all high risk forms of aml they are treated with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation when it is possible okay so so we are concluding today's lecture thank you very much for watching this particular video thank you sir okay thank you sir